actually it's safe to have the knife equipped again. Here's the thing about this, it's Twin Peaks meets Silent Hill. <laughs> oh, they have guns. They have guns. Agent Morgan, if you're so desperate, then why not smoke two at once? It... Uh. Who's that old man? That's Harry. Harry Stewart. One of the bigger problems around here. His father started up the lumber trade and founded this town. But he's a weird one, as I'm sure you can see. Always dressed like that, never speaking to the townsfolk. And just FYI, he owns almost the entire town. Not that that makes any difference. So long as I'm around, he won't be getting away with any funny business. Mysterious capitalist. Mr. Francis York Morgan. Haste won't lead you to what you seek. Keep your eyes focused on your footing as we speak. So says Mr. Stewart. Nice to meet you too. How did you know my name? Mr. Francis York Morgan, information desires you, just as you desire information too. So says Mr. Stewart. Harry, stop trying to get in our way. Keep this up and even you'll have to answer to the law. Mr. Francis York Morgan, with each rain our town goes mad, to our disdain unpreventable, so sad, so says Mr. Stewart. 
Thanks for the warning. Then we shall depart, Mr. Francis York Moore. That's how he always is. Always spouting that nonsense. Don't give it any thought. It's all gibberish. Emily here. Uh huh. Oh. Okay, thank you, Thomas. Agent York, we've contacted the first witnesses to the crime scene. You can interview them where they found the dead body. Excellent. I was just about to ask if you could take me there. That'll be it for today's episode of Deadly Premonition. The body was found in the Greenvale Forest After Park. After this cutscene, I just love these too much. Too far to walk. A forest park? It's the pride of the town. It has a beautiful trail leading to a viewing site over Velvet Falls. That does sound fantastic. Show me the sights. Uh, that may have to wait. We promised to be there by 1800 to interview the first <sighs> witnesses to the crime scene. Agent Morgan, if I could just give you a friendly warning. Are you really upset about me taking over the case? <clears throat> I have the authority approved by the FBI to assume command. I understand you don't like it, but you will follow my orders. I'm not disputing FBI authority, but this is our town. You won't get far alone, and you gain nothing by antagonizing me. It's part of my personality. I just do things my way. I can take you off the case if you wish. Stop it, you two. We need to solve this case, not bicker among ourselves. Mm. Never inhale lime salt, kids. We're going to go to the gun store. That, that, that's how we're going to end the part. Anna's body was discovered by the woodsman Jim Green, along with his two grandchildren, Isaac and Isaiah. What were they doing in the forest? Just their daily routine. They found Anna's body during a morning walk. So you've talked to them already? Not officially. Not yet. Not yet? Are you out of your mind? You haven't interviewed them yet? Agent York, that tone is hardly appropriate. We were given orders to wait for you to arrive. Orders by who? A man called Abrams from the FBI. Robert, is it? Good old Bob Abrams. I did tell him to stay out of it. It's always tough to have a meddling boss, huh, Zach? I thought you knew, Agent Morgan. Don't worry about it. We may not have taken official statements, but we got all the information we need. I can fill you in right now if you'd like. Thanks, George, but that won't be necessary. I want to hear the details from the witnesses themselves, firsthand. I just can't believe that the children had to witness the crime scene. They may be traumatized. You'd better do this carefully. Don't tell me you get nervous talking to children, Emily. Not at all. That's that's not what I meant. Then what did you mean? Ugh, just forget it. I'm gonna fucking drop kick those kids. Show them the true powers of my stand. 
rain for so long. Welcome to Greenville. I'm the Sheriff, George Woodman. Call me George. There's definitely something in this town. Do you feel it, Zach? My coffee warned me about it. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to Deadly Premonition. Last time... We saw York, uh... Oh, I can't do- Oh, I have to have the gun equipped, that's right. Yeah! need to go in there, okay. Ow. Fuck. Okay. Uh. How, how am I supposed to continue space? I'm guessing this is the evidence I collect over the course of the game is uh, is going to appear here. Ooh. Ooh, ooh. Oh, there's nothing for me. Okay. I guess I'm supposed to find that squirrel. Hi. George, do you work out every day? Of course, Agent Morgan. Exercise keeps me healthy. I haven't missed a day since I started in high school. Now oh, that's impressive. Remind me to get more exercise, Zach. But I can't do my full routine today without Arnold. I haven't seen Arnold around since yesterday. Arnold? He's a training buddy of mine. His partner Sylvester misses him too. If you see Arnold around, let me know, will ya? Can't finish my workout menu without him. Okay. I'll keep an eye out for him. Mirror, I'm fucking stupid. Of all certain doors, York will just explode through, but other rooms, no. Alright, well, that 
that's what Thomas and he did. And uh, yeah, <laughs> I am FBI. This is our York, everyone. This is our York. Wait, where did... Oh, I'm never gonna shave. Are there, like... I'm Zach. pretty sure this is Arnold. Yeah. Get over how casual fucking York is. Oh, George. Hey, George. George, I found Arnold. Really? He was a bit hard headed, but I got him to come back. God damn it. Oh, <laughs> Arnold. Well done, Agent Morgan. Now I can work out using my normal workout menu. Good to hear that. Huh? Here's a little something to show you my appreciation. I like where this is going. Never mind. So that makes us even. I don't owe you anything, and you don't owe me anything. No changes to how we work together. Just bear that in mind. Zack? He needs some friends who aren't so dumb. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, you're too goofy, bastard. Yo. Oh. Now, time to tell Thomas what's up. You found the key. I hope so. This is a sugar glider. Sorry, wrong key. The sugar glider is a small gliding possum. It has shorter hair and a longer column-like tail. You can really see its muscle definition on this image, can't you? But we're looking for a southern flying squirrel right now. Zach, can you tell these things apart? found the key. Is this the one you were looking for? Uh, no. This is a gray squirrel. Sorry, that's not the key. Nothing particularly special about the gray squirrel, I'm afraid. You can find them in the U.S., Canada, and in England, too. A gray squirrel. What was I thinking? But we're looking for a southern flying squirrel right now. Oh man, York. What the fuck have we gotten ourselves into? Well, time to check the basement. FBI, open up.
Old lady, perfectly fine to be pointing a gun at her face. Some hard and criminal. Well, a crook. Ugh, I hate the way I pronounce criminal. Criminal. Ugh, this sounds disgusting to me. He, he, he. Okay. Alright. That's for the submachine gun, I assume. I know this game has a sub. That's just a striped squirrel. the squirrel key where would I be? I would be in this box. I'd like to mention that York is the worst cop ever. But the best cop ever. are there. Uh. Well, let's hope that's all the fucking squirrel keys. You found the key. That's the right one. Yes, a southern flying squirrel. Thank you so much. I'll bring the files right in, so please go to the meeting room. Okay, I'll be waiting for you. Well, Zach, we just got here and we've cracked a big case already. We are going to keep casual York through the entire game. The victim's name was Anna Graham. Age 18, she just recently graduated from high school this year. Her dream was to move out to the city and become a model. But for the time being, she was working in the A&G diner here in town. She lived with her mother, Sally. Anna's father died in an accident in the lumber mill when she was a child. Her mother is unemployed and lives on the insurance money from her husband's accident. After all, it's a small town with a low cost of living. Financially, they seem to get by fine, and they led normal lives. A normal life is exactly what a curious teenager doesn't want. It's all starting to make sense, Zach. City folk, huh? No. No, I take that back. All of them can't be as bad as him. And some should have better manners. Huh. This is a good biscuit. I've never tasted a biscuit this delicious. Where in town can I get these? Well, actually... I... Well... I... I baked them myself. Mmm. That's amazing. What are you doing in law enforcement? I'm very particular about biscuits, I'll have you know. The balance of milk and butter you've achieved here. Oh, my. Agent Morgan, the autopsy's ready. <laughs> you are welcome to accompany me to the Greenvale General Hospital. Emily, you come too. Thomas, stay here and tidy up these files. You, 
Yes, sir. We're going to use the car outside. Let's get going. You might think this is just a small town police investigation, but our inspections are thorough and solid. I'm hoping you won't slow us down. If I can get more of these biscuits, I ain't gonna slow you down. Sorry if I've been talking as much this part. I just am not very talkative. I'm going to be doing karaoke in an hour. So. Yeah. The Greenvale General Hospital is down the road by the lake. It's too far to walk. Come on, get in the car. If I'm riding in a car, George, I prefer to be the driver. Can you provide a car for me? What are you talking about? You don't even know how to get there. Which is another good reason for me to drive, George. I need to learn my way around town. Oh, man. Very well. Then I'll ride with you. I, I want to keep FBI. an eye on you. Fair enough. Just one thing, Agent Morgan. Your involvement in this case is limited. That means you don't have to learn your way around town. George, we'd better get moving. The hospital closes at 2100. Agent Morgan, get us there quickly, but drive within the speed limit. Just because you have a badge doesn't mean you can drive like a maniac. George, what are you, his mother? We just need to get the autopsy results. Agent York isn't accustomed to the town yet. Give him a little slack. Hmm. Well then, Agent York, let's get going. <laughs> sure. Sounds good. Uh, oh wow, this is really good actually. Like, it handles like ass, but this actually looks pretty good. Alright. There we go. Also, uh, my odometer is kind of broken, so... down by the uh fuck um the end I'm staying at that's right. So time to go down by the way.
Agent Morgan, I can't help noticing you prefer to work alone. Most of the time, yes. Don't you get lonely, flying all over the country alone? I must say, I've never felt lonely. Are you married? Unfortunately, relationships and I are fleeting strangers. I don't get on very well with women. You might be surprised to hear. That's because you're young. You notice things like that at my age. You have to treat women carefully, like a thin crystal wine glass. If you don't, they can cut scars on your face, just like yours, right? Hey, George, is this an interrogation? I see you're a seasoned professional. Uh, but let's not talk about my scar. It was caused by a problematic woman. Well, she got you good. Terribly good. It'll fade away, and nobody will notice it in a week. A week? It's not that light of a wound. So, Emily, tell me, is there really a need for a full-time sheriff in a small town like this? I'm sure it is small to your city eyes, but any gathering of people leads to all kinds of problems. Fights, runaways, stray pets. You're too fixated on violent crimes. Our job is to guide the people along the correct path, first and foremost. Now that's what I consider to be my duty as the sheriff of Greenvale. Zach, there he is, the monarch in all his glory. Kind of makes me glad that I wasn't born here. Did you say something, Agent Morgan? No, nothing, George. I was just reflecting on a little history. Well, we're in the middle of a homicide investigation. Keep your mind on the matter at hand. Okay, which right now is driving. All right, so I actually am partially being quiet to save my vocal cords from strain. And I'm also being quiet because I really want the stupid dialogue in this game. That's a pretty big hospital. I guess they wanted to be ready for uh, town-wide food poisoning? No, no. It's another leftover from the town's prosperous slumber days. Hard to imagine now, though, isn't it? My mother always talked about how energetic this town used to be. Almost like a gold rush, she used to say. Impressive. But the hotter the fever, the faster it cools. And so now there's hardly anyone left to use this place. It pains me to watch my hometown lose so many citizens. Beyond your understanding, I'm sure. Yes, I'm sorry to say that it is. Indeed. That's why this case is our problem. There really isn't any need for you to get too involved. Sheriff. Hi there, Fiona. We're here to see Usha. Do you know where he is? I think Dr. Johnson is in the computer room. A computer room? In a hospital? <laughs> nice to meet you, Mr. FBI agent. The computer room is where our employees share a computer. Very nice to meet you, too. I'm FBI Special Agent Francis York Morgan. How did you know I was FBI? <laughs> Easy. None of the police in this town wear cologne. Besides, that scar on your face is the biggest rumor in town. Rumors get exaggerated as they spread, even in the countryside. What's that you're reading, if I may ask? You haven't heard of this yet? It's a recent bestseller mystery. It's set in the U.S., a small, traditional North American town close to the Canadian border. A peaceful, traditional place. However, that peaceful town is shattered by a terrible crime. The murder of a local girl. And that incident causes grief and sadness to everyone in town. But everyone feels the seditious, heinous, evil still lurking, alive. Yes, much like the situation right now here in Greenvale. Fiona, don't say that. <laughs> Sorry, I shouldn't have said that. With Anna dead and all... Don't worry. Books are written to entertain, and 
It's good you're enjoying it. What we're faced with here is a terrible crime committed in a real world. Much different from that of a novel. So there's no need to apologize. Thank you, Agent York. That is... eerie. couldn't find him. Fiona needs to check her information. No, I don't think so. Does the doctor like playing games by any chance? What do you mean? There's a message on the computer. And a card key already set in place. The king passes the rook and meets the bishop. The knight takes a pawn along for the queen. What does that all mean? It's a simple puzzle. Zack, let's take him up on his challenge. You can do this, right? Zack, something is still missing. We need more clues. Zack, something is still missing. We need more clues. There's a certain order you have to do this. Okay. Um, I'm gonna be right back. Zach, I'm gonna something is still missing. Try this again and again until clues. I finally fucking get it. All right, so let's do this. Zack, something is still... I thought I had it. Oh. I... Huh. Neat. The doctor awaits below with the deceased. Another code? But there's nowhere to insert a password. More games. I'm going to get Fiona to call Usha up here right now. No need, George. The message appeared with the card key. It's telling us where to use it. 
This is not the time to be joking around, Agent Morgan. Dr. Usha is below with the deceased. With Anna. Below being underground, I take it. Simple. Simple. Then it's time to meet the mischievous architect of this little game. Nah. Hey. Casual York. Is honestly the best York. Alright, so I just have to book it through that door. Alright. giant arrow pointing in the right direction, so just <laughs> go the way it's telling me to. Apparently I was in the right place. Honestly, where the fuck am I supposed to go? Is there an elevator? Stairs. Not here. Maybe through here. Oh, that's locked. And let Thou check the time. Alright, so we have plenty of time. Alright, yep, there we go. That, that was just me. Checking out a comment one of the players made on the JoJo campaign. Oh, oop, I almost knocked over my damn lime salt. Asha, sorry to keep you waiting. Ah, you made it. 
Let's get started, shall we? He is super cool. This is Agent Morgan from the FBI. Hmm, nice to meet you. I'm Usha Johnson, the doctor in this hospital. FBI Special Agent Francis York Morgan. Please call me York. Everyone calls me that. Very well, Agent York. Are you a forensic practitioner? Let's just say I've dealt with corpses before. That battle of wits, by the way. Did you create that yourself? Mm-hmm. I just wanted to see if our FBI agent could handle the task. <laughs> I see. Well, it was pretty fun. Oh, I'm glad you liked it. We don't have much time. We need those autopsy results. Next time, try challenging us without obstructing an investigation. You've angered the monarch. <laughs> oh. Man, that's a From the onset of rigor mortis, the stiffening of the muscles, the time of death is estimated to be between 20 and 2200 hours. Uh, that's still quite early for such a crime to take place. Note that there are two exterior wounds, pressure marks around the neck, and a long cut running from chest to abdomen. Blood marks on her right hand tell us she was gripping something round in her right hand. Her skull is also fractured, but that is unrelated to the cause of death. It probably happened to her after she was killed. Now, I first thought death by suffocation due to the marks on her neck. But after further investigation, I now have a different conclusion. The direct cause of death was loss of blood from the wound. Which means? She was cut up while she was still alive. Yes, uh, a sharp knife was used. It was inserted beneath the sternum and then quickly sliced downwards. The excessive loss of blood from her internal organs is what actually killed her. Her nails are clean, and with no skin cells from the attacker. She also doesn't appear to have been bound nor badly beaten. She was apparently killed without resistance. The most tragic thing, however, was that she was unable to speak her story to anyone who could hear her cries. The perpetrator cut out Anna's tongue. Well, I believe she was drugged first to phase her consciousness and then the killer killed her. Now, the killer most likely has a deep, traumatized past concerning women. He probably cannot converse with them normally. Cutting out the tongue suggests a very lonely individual. Either that, or a truly hardcore sadist. He must get off on watching women suffer, especially when they can't answer back. He watched as the blood pumped from her body, as she gradually grew cold. Now, a case in Seattle in 1985 was much like... Usher, please, limit your report to your findings as a doctor. Criminal profiling is my job. You're wrong, also. Anna died fully, deeply, painfully aware of what was happening to her. But, uh... Tell me, what time did it stop raining on the night Anna was killed? Uh, just before I went to bed. Right after the movie on TV ended, so... Around 1 a.m.? What movie was it? An American Werewolf in London. Uh, directed by John Landis, 1981. So the rain stopped, accompanied by the ending song, Blue Moon. 
George, would you mind if I examined Anna myself? What more do you hope to find? I'm sure I mentioned that I have a personal interest in cases like these. From her lack of resistance, I'd say that Anna's injuries happened very quickly. Unable to speak, she was then left to cry herself to death. Zack, it's all starting to come together. The perpetrator stayed with her for at least two hours until it stopped raining. At the estimated time of her death, it was still raining. But you can still see tear marks on her cheeks. That means she was killed under a roof somewhere. Hmm. She was then carried into the woods after it stopped raining. Hmm. <clears throat> there, there's one other thing. Her tongue was removed with a very blunt knife. In fact, it's more likely it was simply chopped off. Asha, are you a passionate man? Well... Not particularly, I mean, but I am man enough should the moment call for it. George, how about you? I'm very passionate, yes. Especially when it comes to women. But I don't see what that has to do with anything. George, the perpetrator is just like you. He's passionate about women. He's a passionate kisser. This was a kiss of death. Ah, the perpetrator bit off Anna's tongue. We'll never get a dental print from a wound like this. But this is still a big lead. Holy shit. sightseeing tour just came to an end. This case is now under the jurisdiction of the FBI. I'm assuming command. I'll need you to assist me in the investigation. What in the hell do you mean, Agent Morgan? I know I said I was passionate, but you can't think I did this. That's not why I'm assuming command, George. You're a suspect just as much as every other passionate man on Earth. Let me show you something. I'm sure you have a lot of questions, but most of the details are top secret. Oh. George, Emily, we should be going. No need to stay here any longer. Okay. I have to sign the release. Just give me a moment. Very well. I'll go on ahead. I can't take it any longer down here. Bishop takes Queen. His rook takes your queen, and your knight takes rook. And checkmate. Huh? Oh. Oh, my first victory in the Grandmaster ranking.
That is really good. York, you're in <laughs> hell. Zack, they're here. Alright, time to save again, just just in case. Also, because I have half an hour. Alright. Time to party. Time to show these fuckers that mama didn't raise no bitch. Hey, I got I got me some coffee though. Stupid.
I can only imagine this as a Wii game. <laughs> Definite <laughs> premonition for the Wii. <laughs> Man, it. Here! Over here! Okay. <laughs> have a knife broken on their face. Oh, you did. So, uh, anyone who doesn't know, 10 millimeter is the real ammunition type. All of the driving controls in this game, which are god awful on keyboard and mouse. I 
think this one leads into town. Uh, I'd say so. Yes. Yeah, Even open yet. Agent Morgan, how much longer do you want to keep talking? Maybe we should cut the chit-chat and go get our official statements. George is right. Let's head over to the forest park. This place is fully realized, huh? Neat. But you know what? We're we're gonna get back to this next time. So yeah, I'll be seeing y'all.